But today we're talking about value, how you incorporate value into your business to generate long-term economic success. So thank you for joining, let's dive into it. Behind me is the Brisbane city skyline uh, in Australia. So uh, beautiful day today. We're on the balcony of HQ uh, and coming to you live. So the first thing we're talking about is focus on improvement, not just revenue. We were in that first one to three years of business. Everyone is focusing on revenue and I get it. I did the same thing in many startups and I've had a few over the years is that you really go head first into selling, right? And selling is critically important, don't get me wrong. Marketing and sales are probably the two most critical things for a business to be successful and gain traction. My point is though, is that there is another way through, right? If you think about in terms of growing a business, whether you have capital or you don't, you've got investors behind you, it's so much easier to do what I'm about to say. But if you don't and you're a small business and you could be a cafe or a restaurant or a business like that, that requires you to generate instant revenue and instant sales immediately. I'm talking and trying to resonate with those businesses especially. If you've got a whole bunch of money and you've got all these investors, it's easy to do what I'm about to say. Slow sales down, right? So what I mean by that is focus on quality of the product, on how you deliver the product to your customer and to your client, and really hone the skills around that. Sometimes you have to slow down the P&L. Sometimes you have to slow down the balance sheet and sometimes you have to slow down the revenue. And that seems counterintuitive and maybe it is to some extent, but that said, you know, if you wanna play the long game, uh, good quality economics and to avoid burnout uh, will require you to focus on value. It just is, right? You know, if, you, if I think about businesses like BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Nike, Deloitte, BlackRock, those sorts of companies, right? There's a reason why those brands don't advertise on Instagram. And there's a reason why those brands don't advertise on free-to-air television. It's because they don't have to. Because they understood something a long time ago. And these brands have been operating for tens of years, some of them hundreds of years, right? Is that quality voids quantity, right? So they play the long game from the start. Now, my caveat was at the start of this is, if you're a small business and you need to generate revenue, you need to go all in on sales, don't get me wrong. But that doesn't mean to say that you don't need to focus on quality at the same time. I think you should do both. What is quality? Quality for me, in terms of a small startup business, would be different to if I was an existing enterprise looking to go from 15 to 50 million or 50 to 100 million. If I was trying to get to 250,000 to $1 million, they're two different scenarios. I'm going to explain both of them for you. The first scenario in a small startup business, that would mean I would be focusing on quality in terms of how my lead is generated and essentially how that transitions through to a customer support service team or a sales team, right? In terms of quality, what does my ad say and how does it resonate with my audience? Do I go for the cheap discounty style ads or do I go for the quality ads to place myself in the market? So those are the things you may have to think about when you're launching those style of campaigns, right? Advertising is critical. When people see your advertising, what they will do is make a decision on whether your brand resonates with them or not. So if you're conscious about it and you're smart about it and your business plan, your strategy would be as a very small startup business is to how do I gain momentum and traction on against my brand in my advertising strategy where I can generate leads now and close deals and make money to scale my business. But how do I attribute what I'm doing now to future quality? It's a very difficult thing to do. Um, and most founders don't know how to do that. And small businesses really struggle with it. My advice is just to think about it. You could lean into advertising agencies and specialists in that field and get their advice around it and just start where you need to to make money, I get it. Like just run fast and break things, right? But consider it. Where do you need to be in 12, 24, 36 months from now? Because what you do now will really, really influence that outcome in the long term. So now, if you're a three, four, five billion dollar company trying to get to 10, 15, 20, it's a completely different scenario. So now we're talking about things like high level quality and uh, LTV. So you wanna think about removing the simple small hats that you do in a startup business. You really wanna to start to think about how do I become enterprise? And how do I become enterprise means one or two things for me is how does my brand resonate with my customer? How does my messaging and my copywriting resonate with my customer? And is it portraying quality? Is it portraying quality? Because if I want to be long term and I want to deviate from company burnout or, or what I call fiscal burnout, is that if you're running cheap campaigns consistently and you're consistently in the market, what you're doing is you're selling one thing to one person and then your advertising campaign brings in a new customer. But you still have an existing customer 
And in your acquisition strategy, you invested money and time and effort to win that customer. There's a few different elements that change when you're a larger company. One of our businesses brings in about 750 leads a week. That's on a seven day advertising campaign, so through Meta. Now out of those leads, we'll sell to a small proportion of those leads, right? Let's say it's 50. So we have 700 people sitting in our CRM. So as you get bigger and you build that style of database, you really have to think about deep value. How do I connect to that audience? How do I communicate to that audience? And then how do I attract that audience to come back to me? Because you've already invested in it. They've already come to you to say, hey, I'm interested. Uh, and how do you win those customers to come back, right? And then there's all these other things at play. Like, you know, in terms of value, what is your sales team saying to your customer? Is what they're saying resonating with the advertising campaign? Or is it something completely different? And if it is, you sort of have to fix those things. So value can mean many things uh, in that sales process on how you acquire business and clients for either your startup company or your existing business that you're trying to scale. So I guess the message is avoid selling just for the sake of selling, right? Because it's really easy to fall into that trap where leads come into the business, you know, your sales team start calling those leads and you're just going through a bit of a process. I think that's really easy to do. I think we fall into that trap quite a bit. When you deploy training and you start to talk about quality to a sales team, one or two things happen. Sales guys are driven and girls are driven towards earning commissions, right? I call it commission breath. And if you're in sales, you, you sort of know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, commission breath voids quality. You have two opposing forces, right? You have to pay them commissions. Salespeople are really driven towards earning commissions. By the way, as I'm talking to you, uh, our web developer holding our light, uh, which is just about to fly off the balcony. So let me get back to it. Let me show you an example of what I think quality is where you can increase your earning capacity, increase more sales for the company, help more people and get the products our products into the hands of, of those who need them. Like we sell education, we're tech brands, right? Um, so we sell a product that can help people take them from uh, point A to point B uh, and help them move towards prosperity, whatever that means to them. So we're super pumped about that and very connected to it, by the way. So for us, um, we have a product that's full of value and we have to portray and communicate that value to a customer, right? So how do we do that? So I said to them, we have a document that we have to go through. It's called an assessment. So we need to determine if someone was doing a diploma of say business with us or diploma of leadership or diploma of project management, whatever product it may be. Those are the sorts of products we sell through a couple of brands we have. One is Texco Academy, our blue collar brand. And the other one is OEA, our sort of e-com uh, professional white collar brand. We have an assessment to see if they're eligible to gain sort of credit based on the skills and experience that they have. If I looked at the average time it takes to do that assessment, which I looked at last week, I think we're averaging seven to eight minutes. Here's what I mean about quality. When I do one of those assessments, it's about 30 minutes. So it's 4X more than what the average person would do. Now, to me, that's quality, right? Because I'm spending so much time understanding my client and I'm connecting with them as I do that assessment and I'm adding so much value to them and I'm making sure that they understand and I'm listening to all of their problems. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to deliver a solution uh, and I'm trying to do that congruently with the goals and ambitions that they have, right? Like, what are their aspirations? We have an edtech product. It's an online training program. So I need to connect to their aspirations. So just think about that for one minute. The average sales agent will do it for seven minutes. I'll do it for 30. Now, what do you think holds the most quality? Of course, it's the large amount of time. You have to qualify people before you invest 30 minutes with them on the call to run them through that process. But that's what I mean about quality, right? So that's how you get from a brand that's a startup or an existing business. Focus on two things, bringing revenue into the business as fast as you can, by cutting corners, getting advertising out there, CTAs that really get attention, move fast in the sales process, but have a couple of products where you can focus on quality that you think are high value clients. Because there's one thing I know about LTV, right? Is that I don't wanna sell one thing to one person. I wanna sell one product to one person and then sell one product to everybody that they know. Don't underestimate the power of referrals. Don't underestimate the power of bundling products. So when I talk about value, I talk about opening your mind up to be a little bit more not dynamic and think a little bit deeper about the customer and what you're doing. Be conscious about it, think about it, go deep on it, write it down. I say that all the time, write it down, write it down, write it down. Because it helps you contextualize everything. It helps you think about it. You need to look at it and don't look at it once, look at it a hundred times, right? But you've got to really get into the zone of going over and over things because sometimes it's through repetition is where you see all the kinks and all the issues, right? Because you never normally see it the first time. It's like when you learn something new, you never knew it was there until you learned that particular piece of data, right? Now, now it gets your attention. So all I'm saying is when you do it, just be good at it, right? And just be considered about it 
and just give it the time I think it deserves because value to me is how you grow a sustainable business and avoid burnout in your company. You're doing the same old thing, the same old way with the same old products. Uh, you'll get advertising burnout and what, what'll happen is your lead acquisition will start to diminish. The next thing I wanna talk about is sales, just quickly. Um, I think sales is the old way, but I think what we're doing is we're calling sales team sales team where they think that a sales team have, have to persuade or convince a customer to buy something from them, right? So they go into this pitch and I get it and I think it works and it still works, but I think it's less powerful than what it used to be. I think sales is old school. I think the way traditional sales were done, where you know, you have your script and you're, you've got your objection handles and you're doing all this stuff on the call and you know, you're using motivation to get the agent to close deals, I think is so old school. And I think the customer's had enough of it. I think they're sick of it. Uh, and no customer that I know of wants to hear a sleazy sales guy on the phone trying to ram something down their throat. Man, who wants that? You don't want that. I certainly don't want that. I think we just need to approach the market differently now. I think people are very, very savvy, very intelligent. And by the way, they have access to all the information on this little thing here, right? So that's why I think sales, that old way of selling is just gone. It's done, it's over. Uh, and I think if you're starting up a business or you're building a sales team or you're in sales and you're trying to close deals and you're wondering why it's not firing right now and it's not working in the US and Australia or wherever you may be, I think that that's the reason. I think the market's really starting to change and it's moving very, very fast. I think technology's had an influence on that, but you know, I think uh, government policies are really starting to shape things and news content that's hitting people's feeds is, is really also starting to influence them. I've always said that, you know, investing in the share market or the stock market, whether it's ETFs or bonds or whatever it may be, uh, when I notice how stocks and shares go up and they come down, they're very influenced by the market, right? And I always say the market's the market. What I mean by that is the market's highly emotional. So, you know, when you see Elon Musk getting online saying stupid things. I don't really have a business plan. <laughs> what that does, that hits the price of the share for Tesla, right? and they normally go down and then he does something great and then they go back up again. I think selling's sort of the same. I think when you've got a customer on the phone and if it's a phone outbound sales team or you're knocking on their door or they're walking into your showroom or you have to go to their office to pitch them in the boardroom, um, it's going to be about the quality. It's going to be about the value. It's going to be about how you listen. It's going to be about how you resonate. It's going to be about your cadence. It's going to be about the words you use, the phraseology that you use and the tonality that you use, right? And they're not looking for you to lie to them. They're not looking for you to bullshit them. What they're looking for is, if I'm going to invest time in you and invest money in your company, your business and you personally as a sales guy, on the phone or wherever you may be, um, do I trust you? When I talk about value, I talk about trust. I talk about transparency, right? So if I'm on the phone with a client or a customer, when I was selling, my goal was to get them to trust me. And how do I do that? By listening. How do I do that? By not selling to them, but providing them all of the information that I think they need to make an informed and educated decision to get them to where they need to get to because they inquired in the first place. Think about that when, in, in terms of your business, if you're in sales or you're running your own business, you're in startup, you've got an existing company, you're trying to figure it out and build your sales revenue. Get off the old sales thing, get off the old scripts, the old objection handles, all that sort of rough and tumble and start to move your company towards what's my value offer, how transparently and how honestly can I deliver through the customer in the best possible way. And then make sure that the offer is real, right? That the quality of the product is great and that what you say, you actually deliver it. You know, I see these guys in the market, especially on Instagram, you know, they're popping up and selling this product and six months later, they're selling another product. They don't do that one anymore. And then six months after that, they're selling something else under a different brand. It's because they they can't figure it out and they're full of they don't know what they're doing. And all they're trying to do is sell mediocre stuff and make money and then go to the next thing, right? Now, if you want to do that, no harm, no foul, you can do that. But if you want to grow long-term sustainable economics for yourself, your family, and your business, I think it's all about value in the current market, all about value. I'm thinking about that a lot now. Our main company, we're in the top 6% of a 27 million clientele market. Now I'm thinking about how do we get to the top three, which requires a lot of thought and a lot of strategy. So that means our product has to be better. Our message has to be better. Our advertising has to be better. Our people have to be better. So I hope you got something out of that. I hope it helps. Thank you for joining. Brisbane City Skyline behind me. I appreciate your time. See you on the next video.